Slick is a very sensitive horse. He listens to every little move Michelle or his rider makes. I think in the wrong hands, he wouldn't perform nearly as well as he, he does with Michelle. They really were just a great match from the beginning. I don't think people realize how much of a relationship you can gain with a horse. And if you'll just stop and read them, it's incredible what they can tell you without speaking. She loved him from the start, and they just have that connection. And that's what you have to have to be a winner. Every rodeo, you know, would just keep uh, inching up the ladder. We didn't think anything about the NFR, nothing like you that. You know, it was kind of like a Cinderella story. Michelle McLeod, Wrangler What's NFR rookie. This horse is absolutely smoking. It's almost like we're living in a dream and you don't want to wake up but you always have in the back of your mind, it could change any minute. I heard my sister scream. We went running over there, Lindsay and I. She's holding the back door of the trailer kind of propped up against it. We got the call when she was still on the way to the hospital and really nobody really knew, you know, what had happened. I didn't know what the future would hold. I didn't know if she'd ever ride again. You just never know. I grew up in California, basically in a suburban family atmosphere. I always did sports, track, volleyball, basketball, and then skiing. I actually made the Junior Olympics when I was young in the giant slalom, so that was a little bit of fun there. But I think I always, in the back of my head, said I was just gonna ride. I didn't know how I was gonna make a living at it, but that's what I wanted to do. And so I started out as a veterinary technician for almost 20 years. But my full-time training didn't come about till 2005 when we actually moved to Texas. We moved when I was in seventh grade. And so I went to school and I mean, it was a small, small town, but we junior rodeoed. Lindsay and I were able to high school rodeo. And it was cool because it was real family oriented for us. Like every weekend, Lindsay and I would joke. We'd be like, let's try to see how many rodeos we can go to in one weekend. So we'd tell mom, okay mom, we want to go to the jackpot on Thursday, this rodeo Friday, the junior rodeo Saturday, the high school rodeo on Sunday. And we'd be like, we went to five rodeos this week. So we would just laugh and make a joke of it. Hi, I'm Lindsay McLeod. I'm here with Caitlin McLeod. I'm eight time no world champion, but she's a champion at the American semifinal. So how'd it go for you? It was great. She worked really good and she had good turns. It was just fun because we all did it together. and encourage each other and mom would run at the jackpots and then Lindsay and I would both compete in the junior and high school rodeos. You know, I typically go to the weekly jackpots. That's how I keep my own barrel horses tuned up. So, you know, two, two to three times a week, I would see her at the jackpots and I watch everyone and I see whose style I like and who I think would fit riding my horses or whatever. And it just seemed like Michelle really would fit my horses. I'd already, you know, heard their name. I mean, they're so well known in what they do in the horse industry that that I knew they were down there in Pilot Point. We've had High Point here in Texas uh, since 2000. We started out probably we had five horses in training, but um, it really took off when Michelle and I partnered up. Go on. He basically said he had a horse, Mo, and that if I was around, could I run him at some local rodeos? And I said, you bet. Yeah, so awesome on him. And then they bought Slick, and that was like a match made in heaven. So I was at the AQHA World Show, uh, which was in November of 2012, and I happened to be watching the junior barrel racing by myself, and this black stallion ran in there. Slick by design. And I was like, wow, that's a cool horse. And I texted Jason. I was in the hotel, and Charlie texted me and, and told me that he just saw a great black stallion, and I said, we'll go see if you can buy it. I got a hold of the owner and kind of berated her until she would put a price on the horse, and I bought the horse two weeks later. When I bought Slick, I really didn't have plans that Michelle was gonna run Slick. I didn't really have a plan. Uh, we just bought him. But she tried him once and she was like, I love this horse. When I got on Slick the first time, it, it just felt like that's where I was supposed to be. Basically, I had him here at the house about a week loped him around some every day, and, and I ran him for the first time through, and I must have came out of there with the biggest smile on my face. And I called Charlie, and I was like, that is like a Disneyland ride. That was like the best ride ever. I'm so excited to ride this horse. 
she knew that Slick was something special. And this was her chance to try to go to the NFR or to, to, you know, to make some big waves in the barrel racing world. And when you have that horse that you think could do it, you got to try. The first rodeo that Michelle ran Slick at was uh, Graham, Texas, and she ran the, the second fastest time there. So it was exciting to see. But it really wasn't until Guyman that uh, we were like, I think we can do this, you know? Hurry! Guyman's an intimidating rodeo. It's, it's a big, huge outdoor pin. The ground's not that great. And I called him and I said, I don't know if we should go to Guyman. And they're like, just go, see what happens. Lo and behold, he won Guyman, and I never, I never expected that, and it was, it was crazy. From that moment on, I already had us going to the NFR. I think Michelle was probably the last one to probably really believe it could happen, because, uh, you know, Charlie and I are like, oh, we're gonna go to Canada, and she's like, well, really? I gave Jason probably a million excuses of why I couldn't go, I had to leave my business, leave my kids. I don't even have a passport. I mean, I'm not going to Canada. Not being able to talk to her while she was at Canada was really hard, but my dad and Lindsay probably had the hardest time with it. It, it was a little difficult, you know. Uh, we've been apart at times, but not at great lengths. And people say, oh, it's so hard to, you know, be away from your wife and your family. And, and it is, it really is, because there's things that Michelle does that that responsibility was put on me. You know, I'd call her up and go, man, I don't know how you do all this, you know, and keep it together. We each had to pitch in a little bit more of ourselves than we had when mom was home. You know, it's still hard emotionally to be gone, but I could not do this without the support of my family. It's a tough road out there. You think of it as traveling and enjoying it, but half the time, you're traveling in the middle of the night, so people are always like, oh, what part of the country did you see? How pretty was it? And we're like, we don't know. It was pitch black, two o'clock in the morning, and a lot of miles to cover, so it was a lot of hours sitting in that truck, and that's really hard mentally. It's a lot to be out on the road like that and to leave home and leave everything you have at home, you know, there and just trust that it's gonna stay good. We just were going to season slick and hope that I would win enough money for the next year to get into like some of the winter rodeos. We didn't really anticipate we could win enough money to make the national finals. Basically the, the month of July, he was on fire. We would go to a rodeo, Slick would make this incredible run. We'd look at each other, not say two words, load him in the trailer, drive another 12 hours, look at each other, not say anything, saddle him. He'd go win again. We just kept driving. And then about that time came along Cheyenne. I knew I had placed in all rounds and did well, so I expected they were gonna hand me four or five checks. I went in and they hand me one check, so I don't even look at it. I'm like a little kid and I walk out of the rodeo office and I turn around, I'm walking back to the trailer to Jason and Charlie and I look at it and it says $19,200 and I think I was jumping up and down, running back to the trailer, look what I won, look what I won, and it was crazy. And I wasn't thinking anything about the NFR. Jason, I believe, had it totaled every penny. So after Cheyenne, he won 22,000. Uh, he went right from there to Napa where he also won the rodeo and I think he won another 10,000. Here, you know, we've been going for, for a couple months at thousand dollar rodeos and all of a sudden he wins 30,000 in, in one week. I think about that time reality was setting in that I was winning enough money that I was right there in the hunt to go to my first national finals and it was like, you better be prepared to go to Vegas in December because you're going. Bright lights, big city as the Cowboys return to Las Vegas, Nevada, round number one. 2013 edition of the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. Jeff Metters and Butch Knowles in round number one. I have never been that nervous in my life. My first year I went, I was like 
still in shock, like, oh my gosh, my mom's an NFR qualifier, like, this is awesome. And then the first round come around and I'm sitting in the stands, I'm like, I'm gonna puke, I can't understand how she feels right now. It's a lot tougher of a mental game than I think people realize, but in the big picture, it's just another barrel race. So the trainer comes out of me more in that, and as I approach that, I just think, go in there and turn three barrels the best you can, and whatever happens, happens. Wrangler and a far rookie and a tough round. Got to be 1380. Yeah, but look out. This horse is absolutely smoking. It's a big run for her right here. Down a little out of position again. I mean, I've shown horses for 30 years. It was by far the most stressful, um, any emotional roller coaster you could be on. And your whole life revolves around 14 seconds. Well, Michelle McLeod, full speed, a chance to set the pace tonight for round seven. I mean, the first cowgirl out, opportunity knocking for her. Came to Las Vegas, number three in the world. Yeah, this should be quick. This is a good, clean, fast run at 13.48. Wow. Holy cow. He ran the fastest time a stud's ever ran at the NFR, but he also ran the third or fourth fastest time any horse ever has. And that's like thousands and thousands of runs that have been run there. And you're excited that he did so well, and you're, you're, not, you're high-fiving everybody, and then we get beat out by the last girl that goes. And it still comes in at 13.47. Are you kidding me? We lost by a hundredth of a second. You can't bat your eyes a hundred times in a second, so it's literally that fast. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's unbelievable what a hundredth of a second is, but what, what a difference a hundredth of a second can make. Taylor Jacob and Bo are creating a hurricane in the barrel oh racing here. Goodness. I was actually on the horse to make the victory lap, and I had to get off the horse, walk back up the alley, and let her get on. And I was like, this cannot be happening. This is crazy. It was unbelievable, but it's such a blessing to be able to go there. Being where I finished in 2013 allowed me to get into the champion challenges that the PRCA puts on, which I'd never been in before. So we were excited and signed up for all those. And we came home, celebrated Christmas. I was riding every day, getting ready to go to those circuit finals. And lo and behold, I got hurt. Weather wasn't good, so we were hauling horses to a covered arena to be able to ride. And one of my last ones to ride was Skye, and she's a big, huge horse. She herself, as an animal, was a little bit difficult. She was a little standoffish. Well, Skye was bought as our backup horse to Slick, and she's huge. She's like a monster. Skye, she is a huge, big, powerful mare that just does it her way. I respected her as a horse, but I didn't have that love that I do for Slick. I can remember putting her halter on in the stall, but to this day, I rack my brain constantly of how I got hurt. I do not remember. I have no recollection. Caitlin basically just found me standing there. The horse was already loaded in the trailer. It's crazy. She was holding the back door of the trailer, kind of propped up against it, and she had blood coming from her nose, and her eye was already swollen shut. And I was like, you got to tell me what happened. And she goes, my left side hurt. My left side hurts, and I was like, I instantly thought she had a stroke. She couldn't open her eye. And I called for my dad, trying not to freak her out, and I was like, hey, dad. Dad, will you come here real quick, please? I looked down underneath the trailer, and I could see Michelle on the ground. And as we went running over there, Lindsay and I, we saw her get up and she was stunned and really just out of it. All we kept asking her, we're like, mom, what happened? Like, what happened? And she couldn't answer. And it was just the, like, no emotions, not crying, like nothing. And you could just tell that, I mean, it was bad because in a matter of not even five minutes, it, her face was completely swollen. You know, it's, it's, it's frightening to see your wife with blood running down her face and she's, you know, really out of it. She just kept vomiting and it was the worst night. And you don't know, since she doesn't remember anything, you don't know what Sky did. Initially, looking at yourself in the mirror, 
it looks kind of gross because all those bones were shattered. So they ended up putting four plates and I had two different doctors and they did a wonderful job. Um, I have a plate along my cheekbone. I have a plate along the side here, a plate above here, and then one behind my eye so my eye wouldn't sink back in. And it healed great and I feel just unbelievably blessed to be able to have gotten such good surgeons to, to do such a good job. The days after that were really hard because her face started black and blue and she wouldn't leave the couch, <laughs> stayed on the couch. She wasn't comfortable anywhere else. I could barely walk, my equilibrium was off. And that, and that kind of puts a way new perspective in your life. I mean, from one day to the next, here you are running around, riding all these horses, and the next day you're basically not able to do anything. And that was very difficult for me to sit here. And basically they said, do nothing. Your face is shattered, do nothing, sit in here. All I wanted to do was get back on a horse. I mean, I remember one day the girls came in and they were complaining and this and that. And I said, do you know what I do to be out there in that snow riding right now? You don't know how hard it is to look outside and want to be out here doing what you love every day of your life and you just can't. And I was like, please go inside, Mom. And then I wouldn't let her ride until she bounced on the medicine ball. And I was, I was strict about it. So I was in here every day, sitting on that medicine ball, trying to balance, put my legs out, put my hands up. She did it in a matter of like two weeks. <laughs> a lot of people, it would have took them double the amount of time to come back. Just goes to show the perseverance and the dedication that she has because she knew that this is her job and this is what she loves and she's not gonna sit in the house and wait for herself to heal. I spoke with the doctor and he kind of gave me a somewhat okay that I could get back on. And luckily I had Slick. I don't think I could have done it on any other horse. I think it had to be him and he really took care of me. You know, I know she was still struggling with her eyesight. She would tell me like, oh, I ran in there, I saw two first barrels, you know, and she for sure would, you know, had to trust him even more. And she would say like, Slick found it. Like I didn't find it, he found it, you know. She couldn't do it on her own. I mean, a vision is 95% of what we do, and her horse guided her, literally. Crazy to think that I would run in there and all I would just see is a blur of lights and couldn't see a barrel until I got right to it. And I just had to tell myself, leave Slick alone and let him do his job. And I just sat in the middle and he placed in every round that I ran him in. And and when I got done with that, I told Jason and Charlie, if people can't see what a phenomenal horse this is, they're crazy. There was a couple months there where she definitely um, you know, was struggling with her eyesight, but fortunately, her and the horses had a good enough bond that it was, it was working fairly well. It was March turning into April, and um, Slick wasn't able to go for the spring because of breeding. They wanted him to stay home, so I had to get back on Sky, and I was dreading it. She was definitely a little worried, you know, about Sky, and I think anybody who gets hurt is worried about getting hurt again. And there was always resentment towards Sky from all of us after the accident. So for her to trust Slick that much, and then all of a sudden, oh, you can't run Slick, you gotta run Sky. It was, it was pretty tough. In the pen, Sky is very easy. All your trouble's out back. She's stronger in the alley to get in. I was weaker, you know, I couldn't see very well. Um, but I was like, okay, we'll just do it. So I went to Lubbock, Texas. It was a daytime performance. I was out in the parking lot and you came from outside in the light down into a really dark alley, kind of down a hill. And she, when Sky saw a gate open, she wanted to go 9-0. There was no ease down in there or anything. So I was trying to cheat my way in there. Granted, I couldn't see very good, and I was trying to hold her up, and whoever was at the top thought that I was in a bind, and they kind of smooched at her, and she just took off. But when she did, it felt like the bottom just gave out, because you went down a tunnel, and she jumped and went down, and we landed, and I think it scared her just as much as it scared me. She jumped again, and then she jumped again, and I, I went flying off. I hit so hard, it was crazy. Like, I've never hit the ground that hard. My arm swelled immediately and they thought I broke it. 
So they took me up to Justin Sports Medicine and looked me over and I told them how I had all the plates and everything and the one doctor jokingly said, good thing you have those plates or you probably have broke your face. It was mentally tough, it was physically tough. There were times I just sat there and was like, is this a sign for me to give up? Do I, am, am I not supposed to do this anymore? You know, it, it definitely rattled her. And like I said, Sky is a very powerful, huge horse. You know, she's not slick. I, I think maybe on Sky, Michelle wasn't as aggressive riding her at the beginning as, as she would have liked to have been. Going into summer though, uh, you know, she was pretty much on slick. Michelle McLeod, Whitesboro, Texas, this horse called Slick. So we get to Calgary in the summer and, you know, we think we're back on our feet and things were going better. Um, so Michelle went in her first set and she ran the two fastest times of, of the rodeo. Oh, can that lady ride? Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> he felt great. I was finally figuring out my first barrel. Just so excited and pumped to be running Slick. But you always have in the back of your mind, it could change any minute. I don't think that horse knows how good he is. You and I have seen him awesome for a month. We were all pumped up and excited, and we went to dinner, and Michelle was still there, and she called, and she said, I went to feed Slick, and he's not, he doesn't want to eat. He didn't touch an ounce of his grain. Didn't even move it. It just was the same pile as I had poured in there. So I go and I get a thermometer and it's 105.8, which is unbelievably high. So I run to the trailer and I get another thermometer. And I remember telling myself, please, the first one be broken. Please be broken. This can't be it. So I take his temperature again and sure enough, it's 105.8. We immediately were hooking up the truck and trailer and I put ice on his legs and we got him loaded and off to a hospital. And they, you know, they're like, this is bad. This is really, really bad. Unfortunately, we knew right away something was wrong with his lungs, you know, that he probably had a virus or something. And it was just hard to believe that was really happening because he'd just run, literally four hours before that, he'd ran the fastest time. Talk about being on cloud nine and then all of a sudden down in the dumps. And then I just said at that point, I don't care if he ever runs barrels again. Please don't let this horse suffer. At that moment, you know, all you care about really is the health of your animal. And, you know, for the next couple of days, we just want to make sure he's going to live. He stayed there for a couple of weeks up in Calgary recovering, and that was a, it was a real hit to Slick and to, to his health. Well, after uh, Calgary, when you know, we were again having a, a huge high and then Slick got hurt, that really kind of changed our whole program. Every time we make a plan, it gets changed. And Michelle really is good at that. She knows how to put stuff behind her and be able to go with the flow of the change. You have to be able to handle the highs as well as the lows and be able to let them go and not dwell on those. And, and that can be a big struggle when you hit a bump in the road and you kind of want to fall into that and you can't let yourself because you basically have rodeos every day and you can't carry that over to the next rodeo. So, so it's, it's a big mental game. Welcome to Rock Springs, Wyoming. Jeff Metters along with Ty O'Neill McClary. And you know, Ty, when the National High School Finals Rodeo comes to town, it literally takes over Rock Springs. The girls were in Rock Springs, Wyoming. Poor Lindsay was trying to get ready for her high school national finals, which is a huge deal. So she has her own stress and stuff on that. My mom, literally two days before I ran, she was like, you're gonna get to run Sky. And I was like, I was really nervous because my mom and my sister talked about how big and scary and powerful she is. And I was like, oh gosh. And of course the horsepower, we don't even have to talk about here. Of course her mom, Michelle McLeod, being a national finalist in the barrel racing. You know, she didn't get to be there, but I literally was on the phone with her every second, calling her and like, and I left her voicemail. I was like, I just won the high school finals. Like, I was so excited. There's the fist bump right there by her. She knows that it's a good run, Jim. I think what really changed for Michelle was watching her kids win on her. She just said, you know, if my kids can do this, I can do this. So Lindsay McLeod setting the pace, busting that 17 second barrier. I think it took her having to see Lindsay in the same atmosphere under that much pressure, able to perform and not worry about what Sky was gonna do and just go do it. I didn't have any worries and I just came and told myself, be solid and whatever happens, happens. By this point, I have zero expectations. I'm just like going through the motions, whatever's gonna happen, happen, but I saw 
Lindsay really riding Sky good. All I can do is feed off that. So we get to Napa. I was standing in the back alley. Lindsay leads her up to me, and she looks at me and she says, Mom, there is nowhere for you to go but fast. She broke the arena record and we won that that first go at Napa and it was just unbelievable. It was cra I would have never thought it in my wildest dreams and it was it was crazy unbelievable. There was a new side to mom. She was more aggressive. She was she's like I can do this and it led on to the end of the year. Unfortunately, Slick had a bit of a relapse. So, going into the 2014 NFR, Michelle knew she had Sky. That's all she had. When we decided that Slick was not going to go to the NFR, I think everybody was pretty, pretty down. I had a few, about a week of a little bit of a pity party for myself. And then I thought, you know what? Get on a plan, stick with it, let's go. You could tell the closer we got, the more she knew, I got to make this work and this is what I got. I think she just had to put her mind to it and let go of any worries that she had, any fears that she had, and she did. Michelle McLeod ready to go. Second time she's made it to the Wrangler NFR. Blind into that first barrel. We had some ground issues thrown at us right off the bat, and she handled them great. And I started off my first go really good. This is a horse, a little mare, actually. She rides called Sky. 14-24. That'll put her second now in the race. I think after the first run, when Michelle did well and Sky did well, I think everybody took a, a big, deep breath, and, and we knew we were going to be able to make it through the NFR. So my only goal with owning my barrel horses after we've got to Vegas and stuff was to have them win around. I said, okay, they're fixing the ground on the third night. The fourth night, the horses are more confident now because they've been on a couple days of better ground. Fifth night, she was running. It's tight. 1366. Now we're barrel racing. Man, oh man. I'm telling you, those old horses, they figured out that ground's not going to give and they're going to start working. Actually, to be there round five and be like, Mom, you just won the round. It was huge. It was a dream come true. There's a lot of jumping up and down and hugging and uh, swinging her around and, and yelling. So it was an exciting night. I can't even tell you the feelings we had. We were like, this is awesome, like especially with our injury. And to win the round on the horse that hurt her was even more awesome. But then at round 10 to be like, you just won the fastest time saddle. It was awesome. It made the year. There were so many times I could have given up, but I didn't want to. So I'd so encourage other people never give up. She just has so much drive. She doesn't give up. She just gets tougher. She's the hardest. And I'm not just saying this because she's my wife, but she is the hardest working person, the most driven person I've ever known. And I'm in awe. I don't feel I would be where I'm at today without all the hours that I put in previous to 2013 when I got to rodeo. I was literally outside on a horse or working with a horse probably 18 out of the 24 hours in a day. So when you work day in and day out and you're physically and mentally tired, but you're still able to perform, I think that just comes from hard work. And, and I would just say, if, if you love something and you wanna do something, you need to work hard at it and it'll pay off. All right, this first barrel is gonna set her run up and it was a good one. And she was fast last night too. Wow. Boy, it looks fast. This is eight-time NORO champion Lindsay McLeod. I'm here with Jenna McLeod and Kayla McLeod. I'm gonna ask them a few questions. Ma'am. Oh, <laughs> hi. How'd it go for you yesterday? It went good. I had the best third row I've ever had in my life, and Sky worked really good. Look who just joined us! 
the one and only Michelle McLeod. <laughs> it's interview time. Come on, it's interview time. It's freezing outside. How did it go for you yesterday, ma'am? You know, I was so excited to be at the American. It was such a great opportunity, and I was just thrilled to be there. And it's, I would like to thank especially all my sponsors because what an awesome, awesome opportunity to be at that. Your, your hat there says happy, happy, happy. Are you happy, happy, happy? Oh, I'm so happy, happy, happy. <laughs> High five! High five. Woo! Woo! Okay, now we're going back to interview Caitlin McLeod because Michelle McLeod has to go take care of her pig. I'll bring you too. Okay. Anyways, Caitlin, yeah. we're, we're such good besties. How'd you yesterday? <laughs>